she'd like slipped in and she said, so we got the genetics test back and I have some hard news to tell you. It did come back that Vigo has some extra genetic material. And again, like I'm a lawyer, he's, <laughs> you know, he, he's a business MBA. I mean, we we're smart people, but you know, extra genetic material, when you say it like yeah. that, I was like, is that so good? Could good it be okay? Mean, it's like, yeah. could it be innocuous? I don't know. <laughs> extra genetic material. <laughs> Turns out, spoiler alert, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> you know, and I just remember her saying that and I was like, what are you saying? You know, um, but they left us with that. So shortly after that conversation, which we pretty much encapsulated it for you, they left us with um, the printout from the unique website. And Theron read through it. I was so in, I was so much in shock. Like I really couldn't move. I was just holding Vigo and I like could hardly breathe. And Theron started thumbing through it very quickly. And he's a fast reader. Yeah. And then he just started, he, I mean, I broke down. He broke down like I've never seen before. And I just remember thinking like, this has to be a dream. Like I need to get out of this reality right now because this is too much. And the way, I mean, I don't think there's any way to deliver the news that your child is going to die, but the way that it was like so confusingly delivered did feel like it was extra trauma in that moment. And I think that's, um, it felt more traumatic. And when I think back at my worst moments, of course, the diagnosis was one of the worst moments. Um, but, but that feeling of being like, what are they saying? What, what does it mean? Like that. And so anyway, we read through the unique document. Um, unique happens to feature a little girl that I, not, we now know better who's in New Zealand. And she actually has done very well in terms of like, she can breathe. She can sometimes eat by mouth. Like that's pretty big deal. Um, and at that point we, you know, Vigo was still using CPAP. He was still on CPAP. They kept trying to wean him off and they had to keep going back to the nasal, to CPAP. He couldn't handle the nasal cannula. And, you know, they were just saying, well, everybody's, every baby's different and we're doing the CPAP dance and this and that. And so we had not, we never considered that his breathing was so deeply affected um, until, you know, after that. So, um, but, you know, it talked about like five of the 13 children in the one or two year study or wh however long it was, it, you know, had died in their first year of period. There, there was no explanation of how they died. Um, it was just, they died in their first year. And so we were like, well, those odds aren't great. And we don't know what are they dying from? We had this document that said, you know, had listed some very, very, very few babies were, were in, um, included in what was written in the document, maybe 13 at, at most. And the, the outcomes were really scary. And there was, you know, a lot of death. And so every single specialist that came in the room, including the neurologist, everybody, we would say, what does this document mean? And why are they dying? What are they dying from? How did these babies die? You know, and, and they were all like, oh, we're not here to talk about that. You could see that in their head being like, I just have a little, I was, <laughs> yeah. I had like one little thing I was supposed to do, you know, and they're just like, and we're like, no, no, no. How do they die? Why are they dying? So we were really, I was fixated on that because I needed to know what, what was wrong with this bait? Like what was fatal about this? Right. And everybody had these really, like, I feel like the medical providers, the doctors and nurses who work in the NICU, maybe more in the PICU, they would have been able to talk about it, but they're just, they see all these sort of, yes, there are lots of different ways that the babies die, but, but they see it all the time as sort of like a, I understand this syndrome thing. And nobody like broke it down in any way. So we, um, I remember we suddenly got on everybody's pity list and 
and we were moved from our windowless tiny room to a corner window room <laughs> immediately. They were like, somebody move this family. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh God, I really don't want to, this This is, doesn't feel lucky yeah, to us. Like, this is what we had to do to get the good room. 